Hello and welcome to South Bank Secrets, an intimate look at what is a treasured part of our city. South Bank really is like Brisbane's living room and we're going to show you from one end to the other. It's beautiful gardens, it's stunning beaches, it's fascinating history and the people who love this special place. I really can't believe it. About 10 million visitors each year walk, ride, swim, exercise, lounge around and eat here at South Bank Parklands. And with 40 acres and more than 50 restaurants to share, there's plenty of room for everyone. And that is one of the real secrets as to why we love South Bank. It's easy. Easy to get to, easy to get around and easy to find a little slice to call your own. For some, it's an everyday lunch destination. Others, a once-in-a-lifetime visit. But everyone leaves with a little more sunshine in their lives. The South Bank vibe now permeates out into the rest of the city. The design, the culture and the lifestyle are a polarising view of what lies at the heart of life in Brisbane. The South Bank story has twists and turns, booms and busts, floods and fortunes. And this part of the river has come to represent the awakening of the modern Brisbane. It's where we come to see the things that make us love this city. The story started long ago, but it became really interesting around something called World Expo 88. Twenty thirteen is the twenty fifth anniversary of World Expo eighty eight, which came to glorious life on April thirty, nineteen eighty eight. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth got things underway. I now declare World Expo eighty eight well and truly open. Visitors were dumbfounded by what they saw, acres of the most incredible art, entertainment, food and culture on a scale Queensland and Australia had never seen. Extraordinary street parades traversed the site day and night. Pavilions from around the world celebrated the expo theme of leisure in the age of technology. There were hovercrafts, paddle wheelers and illuminated sculptures on the river, a monorail zooming overhead international artists on the stages and the sun sails that dominated the city skyline. Expo 88 lived up to its promise of being the happiest place on earth. They were projecting 7 million visitors to break even but at the end of the six months more than 16 million people had passed through the gates. The closing ceremony on the 30th of October 1988 had the longest and possibly saddest fireworks display in the history of Queensland. Once the glorious six months had ended, there was a tangible sense of loss. Without realising it, Brisbane had woken up to what it could and did show the world. It changed my life by making me realise that um, Expo was something carried out by ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Being involved in the entertainment industry really um, set it off at Expo. The most important thing is we came away with smiles on our face and friendships that will last forever. There was no way post-Expo Brisbane was ever going to be the same. One look at South Bank can tell you that. But what about before Expo? Well, Andrew Lofthouse will fill you in. If you were looking for a huge chunk of land to hold a World Expo on in 1988, it's quite incredible to think that a slice of prime riverfront property was just lying waiting. But South Bank pre-Expo has a very, very colourful story. When Queensland became a free settlement in 1840, the industrial and commercial sections of the new colony of Brisbane set up shop on the South Brisbane Reach. It was never plain sailing with alarming regularity. The whole foreshore went underwater. Infrastructure was washed away along with the hopes of many of the residents. And a lot of businesses just packed up and moved across the river to higher ground to the present site of the CBD. 
The great floods of 1841 and 1893 were four metres higher than those of 2011. South Brisbane was left with dilapidated wharves that were choking in coal dust and effluent. The grubby back streets bustled with pubs and bawdy theatres and the area began a gradual decline. Some traces of those wild days still remain as integral parts of South Bank. The Ship Inn, built in 1865. And the Plough Inn, built in 1885. These old watering holes were sited to take maximum advantage of all of the activity on the ports. So these pubs have seen the highs and the lows of this whole area. And the Plough Inn is apparently haunted. As much by the ghosts of happy, happy expo revellers as those lost in history. Well, Mal, you're the publican here at the Plough Inn, one of the oldest buildings in this part of Brisbane. Yeah, mate, it's been very, uh, very lucky to be a part of this old uh, heritage charm. It's um, been around for a long time and holds a, a very close um, meaning in a lot of people's hearts around Brizzy. Now, is it true that it's haunted? It has um, been classified as a haunted building. We do have several ghosts floating around that make us aware that they're here and keeping an eye on us. We, well, we right. do know they're, they're friendlies and um, yeah, it's good fun actually. We, we have a bit of fun with them. Well, there weren't much more than ghosts in this part of town by the early 1980s. The whole area had seen years of demolitions and much of the riverfront was empty space with few of the original buildings still standing. Expo 88 gave this whole precinct, including the Plough Inn, a new lease on life and all of a sudden Brisbane was back in love with this stretch of the riverbank. The day after Expo finished, the wrecking crews moved in. Once again, the riverbank was being wiped clean by the dozers. It was hard for the city to watch its beloved expo being torn to pieces. Much of the artwork was rehomed around the city, but the rest had to be broken down and sold off. The original plan was to sell off the site and create a whole new inner city Brisbane. But the people raised their voices and the plans changed to create a public space. It took about four years, and on June the 20th, 1992, South Bank opened to the public. There were a few differences, but some careful tweaking over the years has resulted in the parklands being a stunning success. Those 10 million visitors a year are testament to that. As a symbol of how Brisbane changed its attitudes about how we saw ourselves and how the world saw us, well, South Bank Parklands is a happy ending to a great story. South Bank now has one of the newest and coolest restaurant strips in the city on a gorgeous stretch of the river starting right under the Goodwill Bridge and surrounded by open green space and water views. If you want to impress visitors to Brisbane or just have an unforgettable dining experience, it's hard to beat South Bank's new dining quarter, River Quay. But the place to meet friends like Andrew Lofthouse. Hello. Enjoying the view? Yeah, isn't it great? It is the gorgeous. city looks really good from here. Nice Thanks so much. Thank you. I ordered a little something. Yeah, that looks delicious. Doesn't it? Yeah, and how's your tour been going? Great, I've learned a lot about this part of Brisbane. It's got a really interesting history. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Actually, actually, later in the show, Ashlyn is going to have a look at my favourite part of South Bank. The Arbour. The Arbour, yes. Yeah, but show. after the break, Luke Bradnam's up from the Gold Coast with a special South Bank surf report. See you soon. Things don't always go to plan. Oh. Oh. Ah. That's where we come in. Allianz uh. uh, Insurance. I see you've got our rental car option. Let me contact them now. Allianz Comprehensive Car Insurance with the option of a rental car to keep you on the road. I just want a bill, get a You'll be okay with Allianz.
Nova Gnome says no deposit finance on the Nova Ford Focus and Fiesta family. Test drive today and discover the amazing Focus and Fiesta inclusions. You'll be glad you did. Nova Gnome says no deposit finance. Go further at novaford.com.au. Senior shoppers save seniors time and money with a huge range of products including travel, cars, appliances and funeral plans. Visit us at seniorshopperoffers.com.au to view our current special offers right now. I don't mind sharing Andy with Colour Bond. I'm constantly thinking of new ideas. Um, here's an example, the jewellery, which is sort of the Mayans here, but it's also very street. They go to the movies, they get back, and there's a basketball court. I work with my hands. I'm a tool. It's basically the same as the house, but um, we brought it down. Like a big doll's house. Not like a doll's house. It's fun, it's art. Fat great taste? At Subway, you got it made. Nine subs with six grams of fat or less, made just the way you say, with whatever salad you want. You so got it made. Subway. The world's biggest boy band. You need a good girlfriend. Up close and personal with One Direction. Am I doing wrong? 60 minutes, 8 o'clock Sunday. Welcome back to the beachside city of Brisbane. Yep, South Bank Parklands has Australia's only inner city beach. And while the surf's a little on the calm side, conditions for having a good time? Perfect. There's no doubt about it. When you think of South Bank Parklands, you think of Streets Beach. And with good reason. Crystal clear water, heaps of the cleanest, whitest sand anywhere, and river views. There's even a surf club. There's a lot to this whole area, so we need to go right to the source. The whole thing starts up here with this beautiful urn in the formal gardens. All this water, which is freshly purified, has got a long journey ahead of it. We've got ourselves a little adventurer here, Coralie, my little girl, and she's up for the challenge of following this water down to its natural ending, which is down in the parklands. You ready, Coralie? Yeah. Let's go. There's no swimming here, so we're just going to take a moment to soak up the ambience of the formal gardens. Let's go to the pool. Yeah. After the bridge, it's time to get wet. How cool is this to be able to walk around in a boulder-strewn creek? Kids love this. It stimulates their sense of adventure. And you know what? It's not bad fun for the big kids either. I love the way this works. It's gutsy. A great place for kids to get an experience that's really different. If you want a big cement rectangle painted blue and full of water, don't come here. But if you want an awesome old-school childhood experience, this is your spot. Here's a made-up word for you. Aquativity. It's an interactive educational centre. It's pretty well a posh way of saying you can come here, have a really great time and learn things about the catchment area or native fauna. For instance, did you know that dugongs are regulars in the Brisbane River? Hmm? Did you? You didn't, did you? Aquativity. Right here. Come on. Come on. Aquativity is a no-holds-barred, full-barrel bundle of fun. This is the spot you'll see kids jumping up and down, laughing and running and soaking up all these mad water-based games. It's free, it's safe, it's educational and it's hilarious. After Aquativity, past the island with the palm tree and you're here. This is the big one. This is street speech and it is beautifully done. I mean the water is beautiful, the sand is perfect and it's got a fancy postcode. This is in a city. The beach and the pools are fully patrolled. Here's a quick safety briefing from the lifeguard. So Dean, is this the sweetest lifeguard gig there is? Yeah, pretty much mate. It's, uh, it's a great gig. Good to come down and see all the kids and all the families enjoying themselves. And what's the usual day for people come down here and just get, get amongst the action? Yeah, get amongst the action, have a barbecue with the family, go for a bit of a dip. And pretty popular down here today. Is this a, is this a normal occurrence? Yeah, pretty standard for this time of year. Um, lots of people come down to enjoy the facilities. Check out how fast I can change into my boardies and get amongst this. I mean seriously, this just screams holiday no matter what the address or time of year. How annoying has it got to be to be working in one of those office buildings behind me, looking out from your office and seeing everyone here having a good time? Well, they're working hard. 
Just a good reason to bring your towel and swimmers to work, eh, Prissy? It's that simple. The sand here goes down about a metre, so you can dig a hole, you can build a sand castle, bury your friends, lose your car keys, all the classics. This is real Queensland beach sand, not some chemical brew from a lab. Streets Beach and this whole pool area are an engineering triumph and design masterpiece. It's such an easy place to be and you can see people just relaxing right into it. And this is the boat pond, but there's no boats. It was originally intended for people to bring their model boats here, but everyone just wanted to swim here and why wouldn't they? So they got rid of the boats and replaced them with swimmers. I'm not going to try and tell you there's a specific activity you can do in the boat pool. People just love it because it feels like a big tropical pond surrounded by boulders and forests, just like you see in the movies. I'm really sad to get out, but I have to go and see a man about a couple of million litres of water. This is Mark Evans. He's one of the head water guys down here at South Bank. And how much water have we got out here, Mark? Uh, we've got about uh, just over two and a half million litres of water in that pool. And how do you keep it so clean? Well, the system runs 24-7. We're constantly testing that water. As you can imagine, it uh, gets a fair few people through it. And so uh, the sand originally from uh, Stradbroke Island, how many people keep it in this pristine condition? Mate, there's many cleaners and they can start as early as 4 a.m. in the summer. Uh, they're raking, sand sifting, litter picking, um, you name it, we do it. Scooping rubbish out of the pools. And, uh, you know, a regular beach, we've got the tidal influence, and that sort of helps keep things clean. You guys got to do it all by hand. That's exactly right, mate. You're doing a good job. Thank you. Now, a beach is totally awesome, but there's one addition that makes a great beach even better. I've been to a lot of surf clubs in my time, and this one is definitely different. Hey, who's the seagull still in my chip? Hey? Not only are the chips awesome, but cop the outlook. You've got your arbor view, your beach view, the water view, and the city view. Beat that, Bondi. You know how I can tell this is a real beach? It's because when it's time to go home, there's always tears. Daddy, it's time to go home now. Not from her, from me. <laughs> More South Bank secrets after the break. From the beach to the forest, Ashland finds a secret place in the parklands and the last expo building. Don't go anywhere. Mart only till Sunday. Grab furniture, bedding and outdoor with nothing to pay until 2015. That's right, furniture, bedding or outdoor with nothing to pay until 2015. Plus, you go into the draw to win a $10,000 furniture shopping spree. Yep, no deposit, no interest, no repayments and a chance at a $10,000 furniture shopping spree. Nothing to pay until 2015. Only till Sunday. Only at Super A Mart. SPM Group manufacture quality modular buildings for hire or sale. Looking for a sales or administration office, granny flat or any relocatable structure? When image counts, our buildings stand alone. Find us at spmgroup.com.au. For heartburn and indigestion, try Gaviscon Dual Action. It forms a protective barrier and neutralizes stomach acid. So for fast, long-lasting relief from both heartburn and indigestion, try Gaviscon Dual Action. One low fat great taste? At Subway, you got it made. Nine subs with six grams of fat or less, made just the way you say, with whatever salad you want. You so got it made. At Subway. Motor Finance Wizard says yes. 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 Motor Finance Wizard says yes.
Customers come in and are blown away by the prices on our brands. They're constantly coming in going, I can't believe you guys can sell that for that price. Stanley Screwdriver Set, only $29.90. Gorilla Folding Work Platform, $59. Matador 4 Burner Barbecue, $599. Click LED Globes, just $35. If you happen to find a lower price on a stocked item, we'll beat it by 10%. Great quality, trusted brands, all at the lowest prices. Lowest prices are just the beginning. Welcome back. We are sharing some South Bank secrets. Well, some things are just way too big to be kept a secret, like the Grand Arbor. It's one of the most incredible features here at the Parklands. It's 1,000 metres of living art. The Arbor winds its way the length of South Bank and is the backbone of the Parklands. There are no straight lines and no two sections are exactly alike. There are 443 steel columns with steel cables stretched between. On each column is a bougainvillea plant with flowers, the same perfect shade of magenta. As the years go by, there's less steel visible and more bougainvillea. Beautiful to walk along. You also get glimpses of magenta from just about every corner of the parklands. Since opening in 1999, the Grand Arbor has won several international awards for design and has pretty much become the symbol for South Bank. The columns are designed to look like plant stems. They kind of unfold as they reach for the sky. This is a standout piece. Even in a place overflowing with beautiful gardens, tens of thousands of plants and trees sprout from every spare inch. And South Bank is water-wise. Since 2001, it's reduced its water usage by about 80%. Much of that success is due to something called Rain Bank, a giant underground storage and filtration plant that catches and cleans more than 70 million litres a year. It's cleverly hidden under the grassy knoll called the Liana Lounge, a seating meets art installation, inspired by a vine that grows in the rainforest right next door. This isn't the first rainforest to grow in these parts. In the 1820s, during convict settlement, there were pockets of rainforest right along here. Back then it was called the South Brisbane Jungle and actually convicts after escaping would swim across the Brisbane River and hide here in the dense foliage only to have their bones discovered years later still covered in chains. True story. This rainforest however was planted in 1991 and there are no skeletons left. It's beautiful, peaceful and a reminder of how things were before Europeans arrived. South Bank has been designed so it blends in with the rest of the city. The boundary between parkland and cityscape is meant to be a bit blurry and Little Stanley Street helps that plan work beautifully. You walk out of the trees and find yourself surrounded by eateries. So many it can be hard to choose where to go, but today I've got a plan. Little Stanley Street might be a tiny offshoot from Grey Street, but once you've found it, you'll keep coming back. It has a feeling of inner city sophistication, mixed with parkland style, peace and quiet. A bit of morning tea at famous Poppy's Basket, I think. Hi, how are you? Hi, good thanks, how are you? Could I please get a cappuccino? Yes, sure. And I'd like something sweet. What can you recommend? Um, well, our armor croissants are baked every day. Everything's baked every day. So these are really, really popular. Sold. I'll yep. have one of, one of those. Thank you. Yep, no worries. There you go. Thank you so okay, much. Have a good day. Bye. See ya. And then there's Unfold, a great lark where you can borrow a free deck chair. As you can see, plenty of people are taking advantage. You can grab a takeaway and a chair and find a special spot. This is one of my favourite South Bank secrets. It's a tiny little island tucked away under fig trees with a babbling brook and even some water birds. It's not Stratty or Fraser, but it's Picnic Island and it's very cute and has a vibe all of its own. I'm not even going to tell you where it is because that would ruin the secret.
you spend time at South Bank, you get the feeling that plenty of people have their own favourite places. Ferries, buses, trains, hundreds of car parks, foot and bike bridges and pathways to all parts of the city and surrounds. The ease of getting to and from South Bank is one of its most popular features. The pathways here at South Bank always lead you on a journey, which means you sometimes get just a bit distracted from your original mission, which isn't always such a bad thing. More South Bank secrets after the break. Meanwhile, I'll have a strawberry ice cream, please. Sure. Brisbane Border Protection Blitz. There's a million places that you can hide things. On the front line with Queensland's elite customs defence team on Moreton Bay and the Brisbane River. The raids, the arrests, the criminals. Criminal syndicates, we're talking multi-million dollars. Monday on A Current Affair, Brisbane's number one. Ray Organic, affordable real food. Like new season bananas from our North Queensland growers, chemical free and so creamy, just $2.95 a kilo. Huge range of certified organic fruit and veg. For your nearest store, rayorganic.com.au. Everything Christmas is at Arbor Christmas, Brisbane's Christmas Wonderland. Huge variety at low prices. Two mega locations, Logan Road Underwood and Manly Road St Galpa or fatherchristmas.net.au. We love you, Father Christmas. We all desire something sweet, but it can be a bit of a worry. Here is the perfect solution. New Jalna Sweet and Creamy Greek Yogurt. It's pot set with nothing artificial and no cane sugar, but as creamy and as sweet as. Good for the simple things, the more flamboyant things. <laughs> and for no things at all. Jalna Sweet and Creamy Greek Yogurt. Pop it in your mouth. Skyrippers, let them rip, watch them fly, hear them scream across the sky. Salt rocket, load it, aim it. Salt birds, go high, go long. Skyrippers and Salt Rocket, in stores now. Maltesers, the lighter way to enjoy chocolate. The supermodel who used to be a man meet transgender Carmen Carrera and sex, drugs and rock and roll the man who peddled narcotics to music's biggest stars tomorrow on Today. Thank you, Pietro, and welcome back to South Bank Secrets. This is definitely the way to get around, and this particular part of the parklands is not a secret at all. In fact, it's one of the most beautiful buildings here at the parklands. It's the Nepalese Peace Pagoda. If you're an expo tragic, this will bring a twinge of nostalgia. It's the only dedicated expo building left on the site. The pagoda is made from 80 tons of indigenous Nepalese timber and took 160 Nepalese families two years to hand carve. The whole lot was then shipped from Kathmandu to Brisbane in time for expo. It's an extraordinary building in a beautiful location and definitely worth a visit. The South Bank parklands are a magnet for art and culture lovers. There are always shows, concerts, festivals and things that just make you feel good. Go to visitsouthbank.com.au to see a full calendar. There are plenty of great events happening all the time, like Park Run, a fun race against the clock that happens every Saturday at 7am. From now until November the 24th, Ben and Jerry's open air cinemas with music by days, movies by night in the cultural forecourt. And Bright Star, Christmas at South Bank, featuring performances from stars of The Voice Australia, carols, concerts and movies in the open air at River Quay. 
My green cab is back, which means we're almost at the end of our journey through South Bank Parklands, but hopefully it's one you'll make soon. It's here just for you. Well, I'll see you next time. Pietro, to the city cab, please.